potatoes. And, and here's the kicker. Most of the, the grocery bill is common. Like if you're eating healthy, quote unquote, most of the bills that I've seen from clients are they go, oh, my, my, my food's expensive. I'm like, what are you getting? And they're getting everything that looks healthy that is packaged. But I try to stay away from things that are deemed healthy. And you have to be careful because food marketing is so, so, so powerful. These companies put billions with a B dollars per year and to get you to say, wow, this is really great. This is really healthy. Honestly, eating out is the thing that's going to kill you. My wife and I go on a date night. Every time we go, it's like 75 or a hundred dollars. Are you tired of going to the grocery store and paying super high grocery bills, but also not really even knowing what to buy to hit your goals? Look, this used to be me years ago when I was in the air force kind of story time for you. Um, back in like 2013, 14, I was a single parent to a young kid that ate a bunch and I was lifting and I ate a bunch and guess what? I didn't really know how to cook super well. And I also didn't have a lot of money. And one of my biggest frustrations is I, I felt like I wanted to eat healthy, but I didn't really know what was healthy. I didn't know what I should be buying. I mean, I knew the basics. I knew I should be getting chicken and steak and kind of like some meat and some protein powder. But I always felt like when I went to the store, I ended up getting these like quote unquote healthy things that were super expensive, right? Like organic tortilla chips, no oil, no grain that were like $8.45 for a bag of half chips, half air. And you probably know what I'm talking about. And uh, it left me frustrated because I, I really didn't have a lot of money for groceries. And I kind of kept those same habits. And so even when my income increased, I felt like I was just spending way too much and not really getting the things that I, I enjoyed, but also push the needle forward. So in this episode, I want to cover the basis of the things that you should be doing to meal prep and how to keep your grocery bill down. Um, it's three main things and techniques that I use and we use with a lot of our clients at Pursuit to help them find a way that they can eat with foods they like and also just not breaking the bank. And by the way, my name is Stefan Coons. I'm the owner of Pursuit Health and Performance, and this is the Everyday Pursuit Podcast. So let's dive in. Okay, so number one is buffet-style meal prep. Okay, so now I, I, I preach this because I think this is the number one thing that I like to do. And I know this isn't really, and I'll get to like the grocery shopping here in a second, but the reason that I like buffet-style meal prep is because although it's not being accomplished at the grocery store, okay, because that happens first, you got to buy the food, um, it's the way you prepare it and it actually does affect your grocery bill. Prime example, I used to be one of those people that meal prepped in Tupperware, like little meals, like, hey, this is my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And the big problem with that is I ended up <clears throat> wasting a ton of food. Like, if I'm completely honest, I wasted, I feel like every day, every other day I had a meal that like I just didn't feel like, so I didn't eat it. And then it sat in the fridge and then it went nasty and then I threw it away. So that is the quickest way to waste money is by throwing food away. Plus it just, I morally, I feel so bad throwing food away considering there's starving people everywhere, right? So I don't like to do that. I don't like to waste food. Um, and I'm, but I'm not gonna eat <laughs> rotten chicken and, and make myself sick, right? So that doing buffet style meal prep was, was the biggest change for me. And basically what that is, okay? Again, I'll, I'll hit the grocery stuff in a second, but it's where you cook your proteins, your carbs and, and you know, protein, carbs, and fats, and I'll, I'll kind of break that down, um, in big portions, and then you get to basically dish yourself up meals. So what we do in our family is we basically cook, and my wife does a lot of cooking, like chicken, steak, uh, shrimp. We basically cook like four or five different types of protein, or if we're cooking chicken, we'll do a couple different flavors, and we put them in the fridge or in the freezer, and it's like a buffet. When we open it up, we get to choose the portion size of the meat, how much we want, kind of like a buffet, right? Now we do the same thing with some veggies. Fruits are pretty much already prepared. Um, and, and meat really is one of the only things that you have to cook. And then obviously grain like rice. Uh, right now we have rice, quinoa, um, obviously oats are kind of ready, but like everything is ready to where I can go and I can dish myself up a plate, whatever I want. So um, it's not this pre-packaged thing. Now, yes, I'm cooking the chicken and the steak and all that, but we know how fast we go through meat. And then the one, the, uh, <clears throat> the meat that we don't end up putting in the fridge, we put in the freezer. And yes, I know some people are like, oh, I can't do that. I need fresh stuff. I am not, I don't care. Okay. Um, 
would it be nice to eat the fresh food right, like cook it that night? Yes, but here's the thing. If you're a first responder and you have a family or you don't and you work a lot, you cooking a fresh meal every night and like preparing it and getting out the dishes and washing the dishes and putting it away, it feels like you don't have time, which is why we do it. Guess what? I'm like, hey, babe, we're out of steak. She's like, all right, I'll pull out the steak that I already cooked a week ago. I'll pull it out the freezer and it's going to defrost and it will be ready by tonight, right? And then we all just get a dish up high quality, good protein. So that's a number one way that I save on food. Now I will say, um, like I said, the meat is really the only thing that like, that I feel like really needs to be cooked. Part of the reason I, I eat a lot of like meats, vegetables, and fruit. I don't do a ton of grains personally. I like oat bran. I like oatmeal. Other than that, I'm not doing a lot of quinoa and rice. So really in our house, meat is the one main thing. Obviously you can cook veggies too, but I eat a lot of raw veggies if I do eat them and I eat a lot of fruit, which again is just ready. Okay. Um, so how I do that at the grocery store, really, it, it's not super hard. I just shop around the grocery store. And I know you might've heard that before as far as like, well, where do you shop? Really? It's the outside aisles, right? So I'm getting cottage cheese, um, high protein yogurt, meats, things that are basically going to be my protein sources, right? So for our grocery store, when you walk in the left, it's like lunch meats, which we really don't mess with that much. But then there's like the cheese, the yogurt, the meats, right? We kind of stuck stock up on those. And when we find a meat on sale, check this out. It's okay that the meat is frozen for me. If I find a meat on sale, I am going and I am buying literally everything the store has. Now I have a big deep freezer. I bought it at Costco for like a hundred bucks. Okay. You can find one on Facebook marketplace or offer up or whatever you do for like a hundred dollars. Okay. Now that one time $100 thing, you could go to the grocery store and find meat that's half off, or they're doing a big blowout sale on lean ground beef. And you could literally save a hundred dollars in one trip, one trip, because guys, meat is expensive, right? 2024, everything's expensive, but meat has gone up significantly. And I know that that's one area where, where our biggest part of our grocery bill is if you ever shop at Costco and you get steaks and your Costco bill is like $700, it's like all for meat, right? So when I find meat, I get them on sale and I know we're going to cook a bunch of meat at once. Um, not a ton. I don't really want my meat sitting in the freezer for like a month or two months. That's not it. But we probably cycle through the the meat that we would cook in the fridge within a week, pull stuff out of the freezer. And I, I do eat fresh meals too. Like on Tuesday nights and Saturdays, we have kind of a family meal where it's usually cooked fresh. So it's not all that. But guess what? I want to be able to cook my meals um, or sorry, eat my meals without having to like think about it so much, right? Like I just open the fridge. I have healthy protein that's good and it's already ready and it's already cooked. I don't have to be like, oh, what am I going to eat today? Like I already know it's there. Now I will say the caveat depends on your shift. I eat breakfast at my house every day and it's the same breakfast. And that's the one thing I cook fresh because I cook eggs. I'm not eating old eggs usually. Um, so I would eat some eggs and some oatmeal. It's quick. It takes me 10 or 15 minutes. And even when I was in the military and I used to work 12 hour shifts on swings or midnights, I would eat a huge, huge, huge breakfast, fresh, all my other stuff I would take with me. Okay. So that's number one, get your meat on sale, do a buffet style meal prep. So you're not usually wasting anything at first you might, but guess what? If you cooked, I mean, I don't know about the sanitary thing, but I, you know, to each their own, if you cooked meat, right. And then you end, ended up cooking too much and it was in the fridge for one day, you could be like, ah, we're going to put this in the freezer. Now, obviously you probably shouldn't go fridge to freezer, fridge to freezer. That's not what I'm telling you to do, but that way you're not wasting it. Okay. And you know that you've already had it cooked. So if you're gone for 12 hours, put your frozen meat in the, in the sink, in a Tupperware. When you get home, it's probably thought out. It's okay. You're not going to get sick. We do it all the time. You put it back in the fridge, you microwave it, you put a little bit of salt on it, put it on the stove, whatever. It's good to go. Um, the second thing is crock pot method. Now, <laughs> when I was in the military, I did not know how to cook at all. Okay. It, it was pretty bad. I would go, I'd kind of use the buffet style meal prep, but what I would do is I would go grill a bunch of, uh, stuff. I just throw like everything on the grill. Besides that, I use my crock pot a lot. I would use crock pot chicken, literally just frozen chicken breast and cans of salsa. That's it. Maybe a little bit of water and it was shredded salsa chicken. It was really good. And an easy way to do that. If you're tracking your food is if you put like eight chicken breasts in, you just put that in my fitness pal or like for our clients, they use our food tracking app, most of them within our app. And, um, you just like divide it, right? If you're like, Hey, this big Tupperware has eight chicken breasts in it. Then I would just like, you know, portion out those things. And that's, that's one thing that I would say 
is sometimes when you're buffet style meal prepping, it can be a little bit hard to, especially with meals like that, it could be hard to actually track your macros effectively. But basically I would make that big thing a salsa chicken and I would take the big thing and then I would put it into eight different Tupperwares because I wanted to know how many grams of protein I was getting in roughly. So it can be hard to measure, but again, that was a big way for me. And here's the thing. The crock pot generally cooked while I was doing other things. I'm not recommending you put your crock pot on, you leave for work, you come back. That's a house fire waiting to happen. But what I do recommend is if on your next day off, like first thing in the morning, put the chicken in there, put the salsa in there, or there's, there's, go online. There's so many crock pot meals and you put it in and then you go throughout your day, right? Like if you're leaving the house for a long period of time, maybe don't, maybe your spouse is there, but like it's doing the job while you're not doing it. Um, I'm a big person that likes to kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. And I try to get a lot of things done at one time. That's why I walk and listen to my podcast or if I can work and I don't know, I, I try to get a bunch of stuff done because your biggest excuse to why you don't meal prep consistently is time, right? Or I don't like to cook, which whatever, figure it out. Like I don't like to cook either, but I have a goal to hit and I don't want to always eat out. And even if you can afford it financially, we know that eating out is just not as good for you. They use uh, calories go way up. They use oils. It's just not a, a super healthy thing. So crock pot meals are huge. Okay. And then number three, which might seem a little bit weird is making time to cook, like setting aside, like almost like a religion, like, Hey, on Wednesday nights, I meal prep. And the best thing I ever did when meal prepping, which my wife takes care of a lot of it now, cause I'm running this thing is she watches shows. She has like her show on in the background. So it's kind of like a therapeutic thing. You know, she can watch her show. She can cook or again, listen to a podcast like this. Listen to this podcast. Um, listen to your favorite music. Listen to an audio book like self-development, whatever you want to do while you're cooking. So you're getting your meal prep done. You're, you're growing your brain. You're educating yourself. You're motivating yourself. Like I'm huge into that. And it doesn't seem like, oh, boring and monotonous and cooking. And if you're uh, somebody that's like, well, I suck at cooking. Guess what? That's an area you can get a little bit better. Right. And for me, if I was like single tomorrow, I would still cook. I'd probably cook like 70% of my meals and I would go out to eat and I'll kind of break down where it would go. Uh, but that's the biggest thing. And one of the ways, one of the hacks that I also did, and I don't know if you guys have these where, where you are, but I used to shop at a, a Winco when I lived in Oregon and they actually have in Arizona. And basically they have like the big bulk food section, like you can literally make your own bag, like just a big plastic thing of beans. You know, you pull the handle, it goes into a bag, you tie it almost like when you're getting produce. Um, and I would get stock uh, or like big things of um, beans, rice, sweet potatoes. And, and here's the kicker. Most of the, the grocery bill is common. Like if you're eating healthy, quote unquote, most of the bills that I've seen from clients are they go, oh, my, my, my food's expensive. I'm like, what are you getting? And they're getting everything that looks healthy that is packaged, right? That's the problem. Anything that's packaged is going to cost more, right? The, the people have to do the marketing and the labeling and the, right? Like that's going to cost more. If you could just go straight to the source, like a sweet potato, not in packaging generally, um, a, a meat, depending on what meat you get. Now, if you're like, I want all grass fed or grass fed, grass finished, organic beef, like, yeah, that's going to cost a lot. Again, I would just get that on sale. If you're somebody that like, for me, I generally don't get organic meat. Judge me. Um, I do get organic fruits and vegetables as much as I can to just avoid as many pesticides. Um, and so again, you got to pick your, pick your poison, but I try to stay away from things that are deemed healthy and you have to be careful because food marketing is so, so, so powerful. These companies put billions with a B dollars per year and to get you to say, wow, this is really great. This is really healthy. Prime example, you can go buy a protein bar at a gas station, right? And if you get the quest bar, it's like 430, right? It's way more than it would be. But the whole point is like, they're charging you so much. Is a protein bar the best source? Probably not. You would probably be better with like a fair life milk that doesn't have as much stuff in it. Just, just the same amount of protein, probably less calories and probably around half of the cost. Like that's just an example, right? Or some people go, oh, well, like eating, eating, you know, eating healthy is expensive and they'll go to Whole Foods, very expensive store and they'll get, you know, a, a protein bar, a kombucha, whatever. It's like $12. It's not a lot of food, right? 
And I did a episode, I think like three or four episodes ago about how to eat on a 12 hour shift. And you know, when you're a first responder or an everyday hero and the biggest thing I see is people just not actually executing, like until you've meal prepped and you're not, not including eating out until you've bought groceries that are relatively healthy and you've meal prepped and you've hit your macros. So you know how much you actually need consistently for like 30 to 60 days and don't eat out. I don't think you could say, oh, gr healthy groceries are expensive because you don't know. Like you're looking at your total bills, but most people are looking at just like how much money they spend on food, right? Not just, oh, when I go to Fry's grocery store, whatever, it's this much. I mean, I don't track every little penny of my groceries, but I know kind of generally how much I spend on food. And honestly, eating out is the thing that's going to kill you. My wife and I go on a date night. Every time we go, it's like 75 or a hundred dollars. Do you know how much groceries you could, and it kills me to say, it's like, you can buy so many groceries, probably not at Costco, but at a, just an average grocery store for 75 to a hundred dollars. Now, when you're getting into meat, it's a little more challenging, but you could buy tons of like, uh, potatoes, some veggies. Like you, you can make a meal for like four or five or $6 versus if you go to Chipotle and you get some chicken, some steak, rice, beans. I mean, I love Chipotle. So there's nothing wrong with it, but it's getting expensive. It's like 50, like I get double steak or whatever. It's like $17. Now it's a big meal, right? It's cheaper than going out to eat. But like, if you were to make that at home, it would be so much cheaper. There's nothing keeping you from making some Mexican rice, some black beans, chopping up tomatoes and onions, uh, cooking a huge thing of steak and chicken and making your own bowls. That would be significantly cheaper. Yes, it is more work. And I don't know how much money you make, but you have to decide like, am I trading some time for money? Is it worth it for me? Do I not want to cook today? But like, if you're doing that every time, it's going to be significantly more expensive. Okay. So just to wrap up guys, I mean, I, I think some of the objections that I'll get to is like, you know, that I, that I hear too, from our clients is eating out or sorry, eating healthy is so expensive. And I always just wonder like, what does that mean to you? Like when you say eating healthy, what is eating healthy? Is it because you bought the top of the line, grass fed, grass finished Wagyu beef? Or are you talking about fruits and vegetables? Like, you know, you have to think about that. Um, I buy this big organic uh, tri-berry blend thing of berries from Costco. I think it's like, I don't even know. Let's say it's $15. That thing of berries, I have a, a, a bowl of that and a yogurt every day, like almost every single day with breakfast. That thing of berries for how much I put probably lasts me like a whole week. So I'm talking about like a couple dollars, like $2 every time I pour it or something. Okay. Um, and then the yogurt I get is an Okio's 20 gram protein yogurt. And they're like a dollar 30. That's 140 calories. The berries are like a hundred, 240 calories, 15 to 20 grams of carbs, 20 grams of protein. It's like three to $4. Like that's not that expensive for a meal right? For like a high protein, good snack. But at the same time, if I'm like, oh, I'm going to go get an acai bowl, which is like way worse for you. There's way more calories. Oh, I'm going to add protein to it. They're going to charge you 12 or 12 or $13. Yeah. It might be more delicious. It's not going to be as good. It's going to be way more calories. Like you see the difference. So making things at home is obviously way less expensive. And I could tell you right now that you can make things at home if you get creative that are delicious. I make these um, like sweet potato oat protein balls that are frozen. If I had a job where I went out, I would put them in my lunchbox. I would eat them throughout the day. Like there's no excuses. And like I said, in other episodes, you might be like, well, how do I, how do I go ahead and track all this food? You literally prep everything the night before. I know you're going to have to put in a little bit of work. You prep everything, whatever, not the night before, but you put it all together the night before you Put it in your food tracker app or my fitness pal as if you've already eaten it. And then the next day you actually don't have to track everything. You just eat the food. Prime example. If I was like, all right, I'm making breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I take a 15 minute timer and I'm like, all right, before I go to bed, I'm going to put all my stuff together. All right, this snacks. Okay. Put it in my food tracking app. Okay. Then I get this snack. Oh, and this banana and it weighs this much. And I put it in and I try to zero out my macros as much as possible. And I put all that food in a big grocery bag. Just pretend. Bear with me. Then the next day, it's already in there. I've already inputted in the app like I've already eaten it. And then the next day, I can eat as little as I want or as much as I want at one time. All I have to know is, hey, I just finished that food by the end of the day. I can eat it in any order and my macros have been hit. 
right? Like that is what I used to do for years. And yes, it takes a little bit of work. You got to prep it the day before, but I just literally set a timer on my phone that was like prep food every night. I did it right before my TV time. It was kind of like, after you put your food for the next day, Stefan, you can go relax, right? So I would do that. It would take 10 minutes. You get quick at it. Again, my food was already ready in the fridge. My steak, boom, 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 weigh it out. My chicken, my chicken's there. My sweet potatoes, everything was already ready, cooked and sectionalized for me. So it took me 10 minutes. It was in the Tupperware. I put it in my big six pack fitness nutrition bag. And basically in the morning, all I had to do is just put uh, my ice packs in it, grab it and walk out the door. And the good thing is I could eat whatever I want in that, in that, the six pack fitness nutrition bag. All my snacks were in there, everything. I could eat it in any order I want. And I knew every day I was going to hit my macros. I promise you, like this might sound like a lot of work, but if you are serious about making progress with your fitness journey, it's actually the most freeing thing. Cause what I didn't like is I didn't like eating, entering it, eating, entering it, eating, entering it. I was just like, let's just do it all at once. Let's weigh it out. Let's see what I might feel like tomorrow, which is another way. I lo- another reason I love buffet style meal prep. Cause basically what I did is I'm like, Hmm, I'd go in my fridge. There's literally like some salmon, some chicken, you know, some barbecue chicken, some Baja chicken. I'm like, Oh, what do I feel like tomorrow? Like, instead of being like, I made chicken all week and on day four, you're like, oh, this is disgusting. And then it goes bad and you throw it away. Okay. So that's going to save you money. You're going to get more accurate. Um, And again, I'm a huge multitasker. So not only can you meal prep, obviously on a budget, but you meal prep, you know, on on a time constraint too, because that's the number one excuse that I hear even more than the finances is, hey, you know, I, I just don't have time to cook. I don't have time. Guys, it's just like everything. You make time for what's most important. You, I mean, you do. You, if you're a first responder, which probably means you work 12s or 24s, that means you have days off, days where you have completely off. And if you, I get it that you might be working some OT or whatever. Guess what? If you can't cook at all, you can do a meal prep service. There's local meal prep services where I live in Arizona that are like 10 to $15 a meal, meal, the mirror, meal. <laughs> um, so they're not that bad and they cook it and they can do your macros and they deliver it to your door in a Tupperware telling you exactly what's in there. I mean, holy moly. Is that more expensive? Yes. But like, you don't have an excuse. You, you, you got to pick. If you're trying to save money, you're going to have to have more time. If you're trying to save time, you're going to have to spend more money. Let me say that again. If you're trying to save money, you're going to have to just use more time. And if you're trying to save time, you're going to have to spend more money. That's literally how the world works. We pay for convenience. And if you don't want it to be super convenient and you want to save money, that's fine, but you got to put in the work, right? Um, and there's not a one size fits all. I'll end on there. there. There's not a one size fits all for me in a really busy season. Like when we first had uh, my, my, my baby boy, I'm like, let me order some meal prep. Like you're super busy. You can't cook. You're recovering. Like, you know, I, I use whatever tools I need to. I'm very fortunate. My, my wife loves to cook. And so she cooks a lot and I have food just kind of ready. However, sometimes we start running low on food and I'm like, I don't want any meal prep food. You want to go out to eat or you want to go get Chipotle? So again, I have some options to do. My lifestyle is much different than your guys now because I work from home. I own my own business. But when I was in the military, I had the same struggles as far as being it there all day, not being able to like eat at a certain time too, not being able, and I've talked about that in other episodes. You know, I was like, had breakfast. I had no clue when we when I was going to eat lunch. It's when the aircraft got in the air. And like, sometimes they, there was issues. My lunch was supposed to be at one and it was at four or it's supposed to be at 11 and it was at three. I, I, you know, it was crazy. So I had to learn to take extra food to mold and adapt. And again, it's just solving a problem. I think the biggest thing that I could tell you with your nutrition is, you know, nutrition is kind of one of those mysteries where you have to figure out what works best for you. There's not a one size fits all. It's super dependent on your lifestyle and your career, very dependent. And it's also dependent on who you are. I've had people that are like, I won't eat food if it's a day old. That's really challenging. Like you're going to have way more challenges than everybody else because that means you can only eat fresh food, which means it's going to be super hard to meal prep, which means you're eating like food that's cooked right there. That's going to be hard to track the macros. It's going to cost more money. It's probably going to be more calories like you know, I, I don't, it's hard to, what to say to that person. Now for some of those people that I've worked with, I'm like, are you willing to cook every day? And they're like, no. And I'm like, well, your hands are kind of tied. Like, what are you doing right now? They go, oh, I go, I go and order 
food out to eat, like fast food or Chipotle. Like that's the only food I'll get or to sit down restaurant or if I cook it at home. But that same person that I was talking to worked five to six days a week, 12 hours a day. So what were they doing? Eating out all the time, all the time. I'm like, you have to, you have to give somewhere. Like it, it can't, you can't have everything. Um, so hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this episode kind of broadened your horizon of, of what to do, some inexpensive options with meal prepping, some solutions in meal prepping, and literally how I do it. Um, again, the biggest thing on my grocery bill, eating quote unquote healthy by far is protein. I do protein powder. I use a really high quality whey protein isolate um, from first form. Usually that helps my protein. Uh, I do some Greek yogurt and cottage cheese, which is relatively um, inexpensive, high quality protein. And then, and then meat and meat's expensive. And that's the biggest reason why I really try to find it on sale. I put as much as I can in the deep freezer and I really try to limit how much we go out to eat. Um, like some months I'm good, some no months I'm not. I'm actually going on vacation next week. And guess what? I know that I'm going to be eating out, but you know what we're doing? Check this out. We're bringing a big ass cooler and we're bringing our eggs because they're higher quality and less expensive. We're bringing some other snacks that are cheaper here than in, than in San Diego. Um, we're, we're preparing, right? Does it mean I'm gonna eat out? Oh yeah, I'm gonna be eating out. I'm gonna be picking out a little bit. But most of my meals, right, are prepped. Last time I went on a trip, I cooked all these really healthy breakfast breakfast burritos. I knew the macros in them. I put them in tin foil and I had them ready and I would eat them in the morning, right? Like there's things you can do to prepare. Prior preparation prevents poor performance. Just like at the gym, if you show up and you're like, oh, what are we doing today? You think that uh, that workout's gonna be efficient? Probably not. It's the same thing with your nutrition. You are in charge of what food goes in your mouth, period. You have complete control of it. And if you feel like you don't have control, you need to take control. And if you don't know how to take control, that's literally why we do what we do. And to, to help you find a solution where you can actually say, hey, I, I know how to eat for the food to help me hit my goals. I'm not a victim of nutrition, which you'd be surprised a lot of people are. They're like, I just don't know what to do. So I just kind of eat and random blah. And then their results are like, hey, I have a dad bod. I don't look good. I have this gut. And I'm like, well, I wonder why. You need to get it under control. So appreciate it, guys. I love you. If you could like, comment, subscribe, and share, the best way to get this podcast out literally is by sharing. If you don't share, my hands are a little bit tied. Um, so that would that that's all I ask. I don't run ads. Um, I don't really promote too much of, of our company's product on here. I talk about it, um, but it's really just to help you. And if you are a current client, here you go. Um, if you are not a current client, yes, we offer services, okay? But I, I'm not even asking you to sign up. What I'm asking you to do is just share this episode. If you feel like it was valuable and you legitimately do need help and you're like, wow, I would love to have a one-on-one -on -one coach help assign me and strategize with me. Sure, let's talk. There's probably a link in, in, in here below or you can visit our website or my Instagram, which is uh, at Stefan Coons underscore fit or pursuit underscore HP, either of those uh, personal and business Instagram. And you could, you could check out our landing page, fill out a form, we could chat. So appreciate it. Love you and uh, talk to you guys next time.